darling. Mommy just wants to make your throat stop hurting. I just want to paint your tonsils. I like them the color they are. <laughs> Come on, darling. I've got to do something to make them stop hurting. Now, you be a good little girl and open your mouth for Mommy, will you please, honey? Oh. Come on, sweetheart. If you ask me, she's going to have to have them chopped out. No! <laughs> nice going, prophet of doom. I don't want to have my tonsils chopped out. Oh, now. Honey, really, th there's nothing to it. Why, Rusty had his out and he didn't mind a bit, did you, Russ? Well, we passed. <laughs> oh, come on, honey. Think of all the nice things about it. Why, for instance, after the operation, you can have all the ice cream you want. Isn't that so, Russ? Sure. You see? Only your throat hurts so much you can't eat it. <laughs> Young man, I think you better go back to bed. Yeah. You wore your welcome two speeches ago. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Really, honey, Rusty was only joking. He wasn't smiling. Oh, I know, darling, but don't you know that Mommy only wants what's best for you? No, you don't. I bet if Daddy was here, we'll let them take my tonsils out. He loves me. Aww. Well, of course he does. That's why he'd tell you the same thing I do. No, he wouldn't call him and see. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy's way up in Boston. They got telephones in Boston. <laughs> Oh, please. <laughs> oh, that's just like you Bostonians. What a welcome. It's certainly wonderful to be back in Boston. I just love this place. Boston, the cradle of American civilization. It's right here, my friends, that we have all of the ancient relics of our glorious past. And <laughs> the hotel I'm staying in is one of them. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's very old, but I opened my closet this morning and a fellow come running out yelling, run for your lives, the British are coming. <laughs> Kidding. It's one of the really a beautiful, genteel, old-fashioned place. They, they even serve breakfast in bed. They have to. They got no dining room. <laughs> but, of course, everything is old-fashioned about this hotel, but the bellboys, they are very sharp. Oh, are they hep. This one bellboy, 3 o'clock this morning, I got in kind of late, and actually room service was closed, and I was hungry. So I gave him a $20 bill, and I said, would you get me a ham sandwich and a bottle of milk? And, Get something for yourself. He got himself an overcoat. <laughs> but it's wonderful. I love being here in Boston. Actually, when you get out of this hotel I'm living in, Boston is no different than any other town. It's crazy. It really is. You know, everybody's in a big hurry to die. You get out in the street, you know, you take your life in your hands. Such cars, how many automobiles are they gonna make? You know, they don't drive bumper to bumper anymore. Oh no, windshield wiper to windshield wiper. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. We're living in a mad, crazy world. Did you read a couple of weeks ago in a paper where this lion escaped from a zoo in St. Louis? Did you know for two weeks that lion roamed around and this morning he went back to the zoo in St. Louis. <laughs> All by himself, walking into the cage and closed the door behind him. <laughs> and I know why, too. He must have listened to the radio for a while, watched TV, read the newspaper headlines, uh, atom bombs, hydrogen bombs, Cold War. The poor lion dashed back to the zoo. I mean, it's not safe for a wild animal amongst people today. <laughs> you think I'm kidding you when I'm living in a mad world? There are more tranquilizers sold today than candy. That's the truth. Even psychiatrists go to psychiatrists. <laughs> and some of them should. <laughs> oh, there was this one fellow went to a psychiatrist and he had this compulsion urge or something. And went in, he was lying on the couch and he jumped off the couch and he said, Doc, I have a compulsion. I gotta knock that lamp over. And the doctor said, it's all right, my boy. Go right ahead, knock it over. <laughs> this is what you wanna do. Do it if it makes you happy. And the fellow walked over and knocked the lamp over. And he said, now what do you feel like doing? I said, I want to knock all those picture frames off the wall. So he went and knocked all the picture frames off the wall. And the doctor said, that's good, my boy. Give in to this urge if it makes you happy. And then the fellow looked at the window, 20 floors up, and he said, Doc, have an urge. I want to jump out of the window. And the doctor said, my boy, go right ahead. If it'll make you happy, jump. And the fellow opened the window and jumped. And the doctor ran to the window and he went, Wee! <laughs> Oh, 
Well, all right, and if I do call him and he tells you the same thing I did, will you believe it? But he won't tell me. We'll just see. Come on. Young man, I told you to go to bed. Okay. Take my advice, kid. Don't let him give you that ice cream bit. <laughs> I could be sad, I could be good, I could be bad. It all depends on you. I could be lonely, out in a crowd. I could be humble, I could be proud. It all depends on you. I could make money, but spend it. Go right on living or end it. You're to blame, baby, for what I do. I know that I could be a beggar. I could be a king. I, I could be almost any old thing. Thanks, Tom. Hello? Kathy? What's the matter? Huh? Linda wants to talk to me. Oh, honey, you took 10 years off of my life. And for that, you dragged me off the floor. I could have done three more encores. What's the matter? A tonsil. Bad? Huh? Look, honey, can't you reason it out with her? Put her on. How do you like that? I'm the only one who can talk to these kids. Well, that's what fathers are for. <laughs> Hello. Hello, baby. How's Daddy's little girl? Of course I love you. No, dear, I can't come home. I'm working in Boston, sweetheart. Now, now, Linda, calm down, dear. I can't come home. Daddy has to work. Now, sweetheart, Linda, will you stop being hysterical? Now, listen to me. Now, listen. Daddy's going to tell you something, and you're going to do exactly what Daddy tells you, right? Now. Linda, I cannot come home. <laughs> Why, Linda, I came home. And <laughs> the least you can do is take the book off your face and let me talk to you now. Come on. No. Oh, honey, no. now come, come on. on Linda, be a no. good come on, sweetie. Let the doctor no. look in your mouth. Open your mouth. Come on, sweetie. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on. Now. Come on if she won't open her mouth, I can't do a thing. You doctors kill me. You invent miracle drugs. You can't invent a way to open a kid's mouth. <laughs> me, Danny, day and night, the laboratories are working on it. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart, I wouldn't hurt you. You know that. I'm your friend, Dr. Verhagen. Well, I'm the one who brought you into this world. Then why did you give me better jobs? <laughs> Very fine shape when you were born. Now come on, darling. I'll give you a lollipop. I'll give you a toy. I'll give you a stick to hit the doctor with. <laughs> Thank you, dear friend. Thank you. Well. Look, <laughs> why don't you get out of here? You ask me to come and take over. Give me a chance, will you, honey? Right. Fix the doctor come something on, to eat, will Let's you? give him a clear field. Oh, kids! For 15 years I studied to be a doctor. I should have studied to be Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> We're all alone. Just Daddy and his sweetheart. Yes, beloved darling. Now, you just stop crying, sweetheart. Everything is going to be all right. Daddy wants to talk to you about something. What are you going to do? Give me the ice cream bit? <laughs> you ought to know better than listen to that, Rusty. I have to. He's the only one on my side. <laughs> That's not true. I'm on your side, too. Everybody's on your side. Now, you know you've always trusted Daddy, haven't you? You remember the time we were at the beach and you were afraid to go in the water because you thought it was real cold? Then you listened to Daddy and you went in, remember? I'll never forget. I know he got froze to death. <laughs> you did not. You got nice pink cheeks. I remember it quite well. 
and you'll get pink cheeks again if you let the doctor take those tonsils out. No! Don't you want to grow up to be a nice, lovely lady with rosy cheeks so all the fellas will rush you to get you to marry him? You want a husband someday, don't you? Of course I do. You bet you do. Husbands are nice to have. Especially for girls. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for girls. Now, if you'll hurry up and get well, let's get those nasty tonsils out and you'll grow up to be big and strong. Because you know what? Somewhere, someplace, there's a little boy growing up right now who's going to be your future husband. You mean my husband is someplace right now? You bet. Gee, what does he look like? <laughs> I, I haven't met him yet. Some father you are let me marry a perfect stranger. <laughs> He won't be such a stranger by the time you marry him, I assure you. Now, let's hurry up and get those tonsils out, huh? So you can be a nice, healthy wife, huh? Why can't I marry him first and have my tonsils out later? <laughs> because it's not done that way. But I want the wedding first. You can't have the wedding first. Then I want to have my tonsils out. Linda, you're too young to have a real wedding. Mm. <laughs> I know what kind of wedding you could have. What kind? A fairy tale wedding. What's a fairy tale wedding? Oh, it's the best kind. Now you just listen to this. There'll be lots of joy and happiness in Toyland. In that very extra special girl and boy land. When little boy blue repeats I do on Linda's wedding day jack and jill and mother goose will be invited little bo peep and goldilocks will be delighted and the woman in the shoe she'll be there too on linda's wedding day humpty dumpty will be the parson and santa claus give the bride away and old King Cole the best man while his fiddlers play in a cottage made of chocolate cake and ice cream every dream you dream is sure to be a nice dream and the bells will ring as the angels sing along the Milky Way in Toyland it's Linda's wedding day there wasn't that a beautiful wedding oh yes daddy does my little angel want it just like that? Oh, yes, Daddy. And now are you going to open your mouth for the doctor? No! <laughs> Look, Tom, I'm terribly sorry about last night, but I couldn't get back for the show. I'm still having trouble with the kid, and... Uh, who? Red Skelton filled in? <laughs> oh, well, that's swell. I hope you didn't have too much trouble. I know how hard it is for a performer to go on cold. He was a smash? <laughs> well, I'm glad. Well, look, I, I know I'm not going to be able to get back for tonight's show either, so, uh, well, I don't want to impose on Red. Why don't you get a nice dog act to fill in for tonight? <laughs> he volunteered to stay on? Well, that's real nice. Well, uh, look, I hate to put you on a spot like this because they love him. <laughs> well... Give my regards to Red, then. I'll see you. Goodbye. Something wrong? No, but if our daughter doesn't open her mouth pretty soon, her father's gonna be a has-been. <laughs> well, he's filling in for me at the club, Red Skelton. Oh, well, isn't that sweet of him? Oh, it's just peachy dandy. <laughs> Having a good time getting a barrel of laughs. Oh, well, that shouldn't be a surprise. That Red Skelton is a funny man. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Where are you working next week? <laughs> He's nothing. <laughs> How you talking? Hi, everybody. Linda, open her mouth yet? No. 
No, Linda hasn't opened her mouth yet. No, and you can take a bow for that. Gotta hand it to the kid. She's got what it takes. Look, let's not have any comment from you, huh? Well, why? I'm just sticking up for the underdog. Underdog? That little dictator <laughs> rules this house. Oh, sweetheart, what are you doing out of bed? You don't have to worry, Mom. I'm all well. Oh? What do you mean? My tonsils don't hurt anymore. They don't? No, they fell out. <laughs> tonsils fell out? Yeah, just like my teeth. <laughs> Where'd you put them? Oh, they blew out the window. <laughs> Your tonsils fell out and blew out the window? That's right. Linda, how could you make up a story like that? Well, what do you expect from a six-year-old? Shakespeare? <laughs> no, and I don't expect wise tracks from an 11-year-old either. Now, look, young lady, my patience has given out with you. When the doctor gets here, you are going to open your mouth and let him examine your throat, you understand? And no shenanigans. Now, I mean it. Hi, Doc. I got the stage set for you. You'll have no trouble at all. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Ah! <laughs> Here I go. I'm the monster again. Oh, it's a cinch she doesn't think you're Peter Pan. <laughs> Linda, look what I have for you. Lollipop. Lollipop. Linda. Oh, uh -huh. I'll take it, Doc. No sense letting it go to waste. <laughs> look, for heaven's sake, if you want to open her mouth, why don't you just open it? You're bigger than she is. Okay, strong man, why don't you try? You're the doctor, not me. I know, I know. We can't dilly-dally any longer. That's right. Uh, Linda, I want you to open your mouth. Now. No. Please. <laughs> Be a good girl. Now, come on. Sit come on, honey. Look, honey, look, honey, little, look now. Oh, honey, what are you afraid of? He's good at <laughs> hit you with any He's stick. not going to hit you. He just Come wants on, to make Linda. your throat better. And look at it, honey. Come on. Poor Let kid. Oh, will you knock off with that poor kid routine? You want your sister to be sick? No. Well, then be a help instead of a hindrance, huh? Okay. Look, Linda, I'll show you it doesn't hurt. Take a look at my throat. Yeah, dog. yeah, oh, that's more like it now. Linda, watch it. He won't what? hurt him. Come on. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Very good, very good. That's See it. that? It didn't hurt. Nobody's afraid of the doctor. Here, doc, do mine, do mine. Oh, now watch, watch it, watch it. Now. Ah, ah, ah. Terrible. See? <laughs> that didn't hurt at all. He just looked in my mouth and he said, terrible. <laughs> what do you mean, terrible? I mean, terrible. Your tonsils, they, they have to come out. You are your Venus schnitzel mind. <laughs> what do you mean they have to come out? You took my tonsils out four years ago. But sue me, they grew back. <laughs> they grew back? What are you, a doctor or a gardener? <laughs> Did you cut them at the roots? I've heard of tonsils growing back, Daddy. It's very common in the medical profession. Look, that's enough out of you, huh? You and your crummy ideas. Will you ask me to help? Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot. See what happens when you open your mouth? <laughs> Coming from you either, Zelda. All right, come on, let me take another oh, look. Oh, come on, Doc, don't be silly. What's the matter with you? What do you get so excited about? You take the tonsils out and they grow back. Well, that's fine. Let them grow and go to hell. <laughs> okay, good, bad tonsils don't grow in good hell. How do you know they're going to grow at all? Why should they grow? They're in the shade. They don't get much water anyway. I drink sulfur most of the time. They're a cinch, they will. They got to grow. No. They got to come out sooner or later. Why not now? Why not now? You know, that might set off everything. If you went to the hospital and you weren't afraid, then maybe Linda wouldn't be afraid either. That's right. We go to the hospital, I take a little snip, snip, and that's all. Is that so? And while you're making me that snip, snip, what happens to my job in Boston? Who knows? Uh, with these tonsils, you cannot sing uh, for a long time anyway. I don't care. I'll just tell jokes. Oh, why didn't you leave jokes to somebody like Red Skelton? <laughs> I had to pick that name, huh? Oh, honey, really, it's all over in just a minute. And after the operation, why, you can have some ice cream. Please, honey, don't give me the ice cream bit, huh? <laughs> really, honey, this could solve everything. Why, if you went to the hospital, I'm just sure Linda would go, too. Wouldn't you, dear? Would you really go with me, Daddy? Well, would you go if I go? I wouldn't be afraid if you were there, Daddy. Okay, that settles it. Dr. Verhagen, make the necessary arrangements. What about your engagement in Boston? My engagement can wait. My daughter's welfare is more important. Tomorrow, we go to the hospital together. You and Daddy. So get, go up and get some rest. Come on. Okay, Daddy. Nice and ready for tomorrow, dear. Bye. Goodbye, sweetheart.
Hey, that wasn't hard after all. Oh, honey, you're a doll. That's one of the sweetest things I've ever seen. Yeah, if I wouldn't have seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it the same Denny Williams I know. I thank you very much, both of you. I take my bow, and now I'll call my agent and see if he can get me on the afternoon plane to Boston tomorrow. Oh, Boston? <laughs> yes, dear. But, but you're going to the hospital tomorrow. I know, dear. I'm going to go to the hospital, drop you off with Linda, then go on to the airport and go to my job in Boston. You mean that you had no intention of having your tonsils out? Look, sweetheart, where my tonsils are concerned, my attitude is live and let live. <laughs> now, that's the Demi Williams I know. <laughs> and you deliberately stood there and told that child that you'd go to the hospital with her. Well, I am going to the hospital with her. I'm just not ordering the blue plate special, that's all. <laughs> staring at. I got the job done, didn't I? Oh, yes, you got the job done. Daddy, you wouldn't last two minutes in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> After the way you, you let that little girl believe in you and, and trust in you. Oh! How do you like that? Everybody's sure, because I won't have my throat cut. <laughs> Don't just stand there staring at me. Say something. Danny William, you are nothing but a cotton-picking swine on. <laughs> gonna be swell. <laughs> oh, dear. For heaven's sake, try to understand, will you? You understand, don't you, Russ? <laughs> Russ, I can't have my tonsils taken out now. I've got a contract to fulfill. I'm obligated to go back to work in Boston. Besides, I'm the father of this family. I gotta support you. you remember that, don't you? Huh? I mean, uh, sometime between jobs, I, I got the time, I'll have my tonsils out. I don't have time now. You understand my problem, don't you, Russ? Yeah. You're chicken. <laughs> I can't wait that for you to talk to your father. Where does he get expressions like that, you're chicken? Well, you just laid an egg, didn't you? <laughs> well, that's where he gets him from. <laughs> oh, my little angel. See my dress? Isn't that a pretty dress? That's the very latest style, I want to tell you. Are you gonna put on a dress? Well, dear, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I maybe, <laughs> but that sure is pretty. <laughs> Daddy. Yes, dear. You don't have to have your tonsils chopped out if you're afraid. Uh -huh. I'm all right now. Mm -hmm. Oh. <sighs> Goodbye, mommy. Goodbye, sweetheart. Your mommy's brave little girl. Goodbye, Rusty. Good luck, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Glad he's in the hospital with me. I know you are, darling. That way you weren't afraid. No! That way I get to eat his ice cream, too. <laughs> <laughs> 